In this lecture we'll explore some properties of the complex conjugate and the modulus and we'll give their proofs and then we'll give some examples so you can see these properties in action. The first property that we'll consider, we'll call it 1a, is that the modulus of minus z is equal to the modulus of z. In other words, the modulus of the negative of a complex number is simply the modulus of the original complex number. Now with these proofs, what we do is we take one side, usually the left hand side, and we start with that and we prove it equal to the other side. So we'll, we'll take the left hand side and prove it equal to the right hand side. So we'll let z equal x plus i y, we'll use Cartesian form in uh, these proofs, therefore minus z will be minus x minus i y. So the left hand side is the modulus of minus z and that's the modulus of minus x minus i y. But we know how to do that. That's the square root of the sum of the squares of the real part and the imaginary part. So that will be the square root of minus x all squared plus minus y all squared because the real part of minus z is minus x and the imaginary part is minus y. Uh, the minus signs will disappear under the square, so we'll get the square root of x squared plus y squared, and of course that is just the modulus of z. So uh, the uh, left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, and the property is proved. Now in property 1b, which is the modulus of the conjugate of z is equal to the modulus of z, it, uh, the proof will be very much uh, the same as the one in 1a, so I'm going to leave it to you as an exercise. Property 1c says that if z is any complex number, the modulus of minus the conjugate of z is equal to the modulus of the conjugate of z. And this really follows from property 1a where we have the modulus of minus z equals the modulus of z for any complex number z so that must be true for the uh, complex number um, the conjugate of z so the modulus of minus the conjugate of z is equal to the modulus of the conjugate of z so you we just replace the z by the conjugate of z so that's a, a very easy proof. Uh, however, you can um, do as an exercise, prove property 1c by using z equals x plus i y, where x and y are real, put it in um, Cartesian form. Now, combining properties 1a, 1b and 1c, we have the modulus of z equals the modulus of minus z equals the modulus of the conjugate of z equals the modulus of minus the conjugate of z. Just before we leave question one, we'll have a look at a geometric interpretation of those results. In 1a, we had the modulus of minus z equals the modulus of z. If we plot that in the Argan diagram, then with a point P representing z, remember we'll go across We'll go across to OM, that's X, and then up to uh, P, and that will be Y. Uh, then minus Z will be plotted when we go across to N, which will be minus X, and down to Q, which is uh, minus Y. So we'll have two triangles there, and those triangles will be congruent by the side angle side test, because side OM is equal to ON, and side MP is equal to NQ, and the included angles are the right angles there. So by the side angle side test, the triangles are congruent, and therefore uh, the hypotenuse uh, equals so OP is equal to OQ, and that's what the result is saying. 
Similarly, for 1b, we'll plot the point P representing uh, the complex number Z. So we'll go across X and up Y to the point P. Then the conjugate of Z is X minus IY. And to plot the point Q representing that, we go across X and down uh, minus Y. So uh, we get the point Q. And again, we have two uh, triangles that are uh, congruent. When they're congruent by the side angle side test, we have that uh, uh, side OM is common to both triangles and side MP is equal to MQ and the right angles are equal and they're in the included angles. So by the side angle side test, the triangles are congruent and hence OQ is equal to OP and that's what the result is saying. Here's an exercise for you. Prove property 1C using a geometric proof. Well, what you'll have to do is plot a point P with coordinates X, Y, put it in the first quadrant, and that will represent the complex number Z, which is X plus I, Y. Then plot the point Q representing the conjugate of Z, and plot R representing minus the conjugate of Z. Draw the triangles, show that the two triangles are congruent and therefore OQ equals OR and that represents the result. That's saying that the modulus of the conjugate of Z is the modulus of minus the conjugate of Z. In example 1, we'll verify property 1A when Z is 3 minus 2i. Well, if Z takes this value, then minus Z will be minus 3 plus 2i. Hence, the modulus of Z will be the modulus of Z, 3 minus 2i, and that's the square root of 3 squared plus minus 2 all squared, which is square root of 9 plus 4, square root of 13. Also, the modulus of minus Z is the modulus of minus 3 plus 2i. So it'll be the square root of minus 3 all squared plus 2 squared, and that works out the square root of 13 as well. Hence, uh, the modulus of Z is equal to the modulus of minus Z, because both of them are equal to the square root of 13. Example 2 will verify property 1b when Z equals 3 minus 2i. Well, if Z takes that value, then the conjugate of Z is going to be 3 plus 2i. Hence, the modulus of Z is the modulus of 3 minus 2i, which is the square root of 3 squared plus minus 2 all squared, and we know that's the square root of 13. Also, the modulus of the conjugate of Z is the modulus of 3 plus 2i, and that's the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared, which again is the square root of 13. So the property is verified. The modulus of Z is equal to the modulus of the conjugate of Z. In this case, they're both equal to the square root of 13. In example 3, we'll verify property 1c when Z equals 3 minus 2i. Well, if that's the case, then the conjugate of Z will be 3 plus 2i. And so, minus the conjugate of Z will be minus 3 minus 2i. So, if we take the modulus of minus the conjugate of Z, that's the modulus of minus 3 minus 2i, and that's the square root of minus 3 all squared plus minus 2 all squared, and we know that will come out to be the square root of 13. Also, the modulus of the conjugate of Z will be the modulus of 3 plus 2i, and that's the square root of 3 squared plus 2 squared, which again is the square root of 13. And so the result holds for this particular case that the modulus of minus the conjugate of z is equal to the modulus of the conjugate of z. Both of them are equal to the square root of 13. We'll now prove property 2, which connects the complex number, its conjugate, and the modulus. It's quite important and we'll use it in several of our proofs later on. We've already seen that the product of a complex number with its conjugate is a real number. In property two, we go a bit further and we say what that real number is. It's actually the square of the modulus of Z. So our result will be uh, Z times Z bar, yeah, the conjugate of Z, is the modulus of Z all squared. So again, we'll let Z equal X plus IY. So Z times its conjugate Z bar will be X plus IY times X minus IY. Expanding that using the difference of two squares, we get X squared minus I squared Y squared, but we know that I squared is minus one. So that gives us X squared plus Y squared. 
and that we can write as the square root of x squared plus y squared all squared. But the square root of x squared plus y squared is just the modulus of z. So we get the modulus of z all squared on the right hand side and that's the result that we're looking for. In example 4, we'll verify property 2 when z equals 3 minus 2i. Well, if that's the case, then the conjugate of z is 3 plus 2i. And so the product of z times the conjugate of z is 3 minus 2i times 3 plus 2i. We expand that out using the difference of two squares. That's 3 squared minus 2i all squared, which is 9 minus 4i squared, which is 9 plus 4, which is 13. The other side, the modulus of z squared, is the modulus of 3 minus 2i all squared, which is the square root of 3 squared plus minus 2 all squared, all squared, and that's the square root of 13 squared, which is also 13. So the property is verified, not proved but for all complex numbers, but verified for this one complex number. Uh, and we know that z times its conjugate is equal to the square of the modulus, which in this case is 13. We'll now look at some properties of the conjugates of sums of complex numbers and differences of complex numbers. Uh, the proofs are fairly easy. Go through them carefully though because they give you experience in writing mathematical proofs and how they're constructed and we will use these results later on in more difficult proofs. In property 3a we have the conjugate of z1 plus z2 is equal to the conjugate of z1 plus the conjugate of z2 and that's really saying that the conjugate of the sum of two complex numbers is the sum of the conjugates of those complex numbers. Again we'll use Cartesian form, we'll put z1 equal to x1 plus iy1 and z2 equal to x2 plus iy2. Then we'll work out z1 plus z2 and we add the uh, real parts, we add the imaginary parts, and we'll get x1 plus x2 plus i times y1 plus y2. So the conjugate of z1 plus z2 will be x1 plus x2 minus i times y1 plus y2. Expand out the brackets, juggle the terms around, and we get uh, the conjugate of z1 plus the conjugate of z2. So again, we've taken the left-hand side, proved it equal to the right-hand side. Now, with the uh, property 3b, uh, that's very similar to the 3a. It is saying that the conjugate of z1 minus z2 is equal to the conjugate of z1 minus the conjugate of z2. So it's saying that the conjugate of the difference between two complex numbers is the difference of the conjugates of those uh, two uh, complex numbers. So the proof is very similar, and I'll leave you to do it as an exercise. Many students find great difficulty in writing mathematical proofs, so I hope that this last lecture has given you some ideas on how to structure the proof and to write the proof. If you have not already subscribed to the Solve and Evolve channel, can you please do so? Also, in the last lecture I showed that there was a relationship between the conjugate of the sum and the sum of the conjugates and also the conjugate of the difference and the difference of the conjugates for two complex numbers. So you may well ask, does that relationship hold for products and quotients? And the answer is yes, and we'll talk about that in Lecture 4, Part 2. Also, I'll show you there uh, how you can make a proof very easy by writing the complex numbers in polar form rather than in Cartesian form. So don't miss Lecture 4 Part 2. Also at my website at Solve and Evolve you can uh, register for a small donation and you can get uh, quizzes and uh, a final exam to test yourself to see how well you've learned the material. I hope to see you there soon.